myself to say there's enormous lessons here and we still want the best for you. So to go on and not let these things undermine you, but rather be a new floor, a new door, you know, ways to find your. The unaccountability stinks in this place. The unaccountability <laughs> just be stinking in this place. After watching this episode, I've got to tell you, let me tell you this now. The reunion part two. Look, I think, you know, the men told a little bit of one or two lies. But the ladies, i got to be honest with you. Ladies, i got to tell you the truth. Okay? Accountability. Okay? Accountability is at zero. It's at zero. It's at zero. The accountability is at zero. Because what is going on here? Right? What is really going on here? Can we, can we have an honest conversation about this episode? We're not going to be here for an hour. Probably an hour. Sorry, I took a bit for an hour. Sean's going to join me in a few minutes. Can we be honest about the situation? Okay. Um, the, the ladies, honestly, are, are doing the very thing that the, they are accusing the men of doing. I'm not saying the men didn't create a coots. I'm not saying the men didn't go behind the scenes and talk to each other and tell each other, hey, look. These are not the women we're feeling. It's obvious they did. Because at the end of the day, we're human beings and we're social creatures. We're going to talk and we're going to strategize and plan. But for the ladies to pretend they don't know what's going on, first and foremost, let me just say this. Can I just say this about Brennan and Emily? Now, Emily was moving mad. But I have to be fair. Brennan, we knew you didn't fancy her, bro. Okay? We knew you weren't attracted to her. And this is a lesson to anybody else, right? It's a lesson to anybody else. This is a perfect example, okay, of what happens when men don't fancy women. See, when Brennan was acting the way he was acting, we all knew he didn't fancy her. We all knew he didn't find her attractive, okay? Now, he can talk about how the first night they told him, oh, you know, um, that she's selfish and that she has one night stands. Negro, you didn't think she was attractive, okay? All right? Because you didn't give her a chance. All right. You had one kiss and after that it didn't work. Now, why are they having different reasons for having one kiss versus many kisses? I don't know if somebody's drunk. I don't know if somebody is um, taking drugs. Why they have different recollec recollections about how many times they kissed is a madness to me personally. Um, but, you know, I, I think with, with, that, with, with them two, I, I, we're going to go deep into them. Um, obviously, Cameron and Claire. I mean, can I be honest with you? I mean, the water works by Claire. I need her to zip it up, okay? Zip it up, okay? Zip it up. Claire, I need you to zip it up, okay? All right? The brother proved he was on EKG. The brother proved that he flatlined. The brother proved that he had to be almost resuscitated and brought back to life. He weren't lying about the situation, um, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, right? That's it, okay? Yeah, so... Um, you know, I, I need her to zip it, okay? Um, and then, uh, you know, Lauren and Ryan, we already know about them. Uh, but, you know, I was wondering why Lauren was getting all percolated for Cameron. Why was she suddenly getting energy for Cameron? The brother's got a heart condition. People, I need you to chill. Why did Lauren have energy for Cameron? He wasn't being disrespectful. He wasn't being rude. He was just letting you know he didn't agree with your point of view. And suddenly it turned around into a situation where Lauren wants to get in his face. And I need you to have that energy for Orion. Focus on your Orion. Okay? Focus on your Orion. And you, you, you step, you're stepping over boundaries right now. Right? Focus on your man. Right? Instead of trying to get onto Cameron. Where if Cameron was really being bad, I would have been like, yeah, I get it. But there was nothing really that the men were actually doing. Um, someone said he had a fake, fake heart condition. Well, he, he showed us the slip that he, his heart monitor was on the slip. So I don't know. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing, um, nothing bad. It was actually really kind of saying, so I'm like, hold on a minute. Really and truly, why did you stop over the bounds? Like, what, what was the point? You get what I'm saying to you? What was the point? And then we find out next week, you out here talking to next man's, next man's, next man, next man's, next man, uh, talking to next gal and uh, man. Next week we find out you're talking you're talking to to Michael a bit too comfortable. Yeah, I need I need to sit down. I need I need you to sit all the way down. Focus yourself on Orion, okay, and beat that dead dog, that dead that dead horse. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously uh, um, uh, um, Becca and uh, Austin. 
again, we knew Austin didn't fancy her. We knew Austin didn't find her attractive. Um, yeah, and his behavior was off. Can't lie to you. He didn't give her no nookie, no intimacy, no uh, sexual energy. Yeah, he, he, I, I can't lie to you. Yeah, yeah, send him to the gulag. Yeah, he can shave that beard all he wants. Send him to the motherfucking gulag. Okay, so I'm not going to be mad at that. But that's my quick summary. But we're going we're gonna to break down a few of the couples. A couple of things that happened I need to talk about as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell button for notification uploads. We appreciate you guys. It looks so loaded. And uh, make sure you guys join into the conversation. We better get into this. I don't want to be here too long because I, I need to go and pray and I'm tired. But let me just say this. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, oh God. May you release the revelation of truth. May those who are liars be found out and revealed. Father, we pray that, Lord, that these people will leave each other alone. Father, we pray for Brennan and, and for Emily. May they come to a safe place. May Brennan enjoy his new relationship. And may Emily get over and feel better about herself in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the rest of the castmates. No, Jake. But look, honestly, real spit. Like, I, I honestly, I can't lie to you. I, I, was, I was tired of them. I was tired of them. I can't wait for the new season. I can't wait for the new energy. I can't wait for the new vibes. I can't wait for the new castmates from Chicago. Boop, boop. Hopefully, the new castmates will be better. And I will definitely do it from uh, the very beginning as well. Because I, I think there's a lot to discuss. You know what I'm saying to you? But let me get Sean on. And uh, we're going to get the show under, underneath the way. So make sure you wrap up. Okay, all right. It's, uh, it's, someone said they need a good therapist. I hear it. Sean, Sean. What's up, brother? What's Gucci, baby? And part two was was a mausoleum, bro. A mausoleum. A mausoleum. Skidachi all the way, brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was all madness. It's Skidachi all over. Um, what, what was your thoughts, bro? Reunion. This was the just. This was just. I've never seen toxicity on levels like this before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, listen, there's some accountability on both sides, but the ladies, the ladies just were were horrible in my opinion. Um, you know, they're calling them the witches of um, of Eastwick. <laughs> 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 Because no, how they tried to collude, you know, it just and I think it backfired. And that's what we saw. Listen, I, I to me, this is female toxicity at its finest. You know, when you can't hold, you, you know, they don't want to hold themselves accountable. You know, they busy talking about, you know, it's the men, it's the men, it's the men. Nah, sis, you need to you need to look in the mirror and look at what you did. And I think this is why they were crashing out because you know what happens? They had this whole plot going, how everything was gonna gonna look, how they were gonna skirt by on accountability, how they were gonna push it on all the guys. Meanwhile, they were all complicit in it. Everybody was in on some level of a scheme and a plot together, but then you wanna push it and make the guys look bad, right? They, they led us into this. And meanwhile, Emily, I need Emily to just go to Karen class. I need her to go to Karen class and get re-educated because she is a freaking Karen. The way she was flipping out on Rudy, the way she was carrying on with Kevin at the reunion, not holding herself, not being accountable for anything. Every five seconds, Brennan, 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 Brennan. But meanwhile, she's out here hooking up with people at bars. Yeah. Chaos, bro. Pure chaos. Yeah, it was pick, yes. I can't lie to you. It's so mad as well. Like that that Brennan and, and um uh Emily section was crazy about who was doing what because she was out here kissing Australians, he's out here texting her best friend who's no longer her best friend, it's now an ex best friend. Um, you know, and I don't wait, I don't get it. Why is she the ex best friend if she told you the truth and he didn't do anything and you didn't bring it up also to him that part was a strange for me it was a little bit complicated i was like so hold on a minute he done something with your best friend but your best friend obviously is now an ex-best friend as you said uh but you didn't bring it up to him and he's also saying nothing actually happened but what so if he texts her surely he's at fault because you're you, she didn't say that the friend texts him back she you know what i mean so which one is it did he sleep with her did he not sleep with her which one is it because i was mad confused i don't know if you managed, did you mention understand that part Oh yeah, I understood it completely. He, she's the one that was letting him know that um, Emily wasn't about nothing. 
and she was for the streets. So it had nothing to do with he didn't mess with that woman. What happened is that she's the ex best friend because she's she dry snitched on Emily. Now I'm reading in between the lines a little bit, but Brennan was getting information about things that Emily was doing. And um, that would be the only reason because they never, we never caught, caught when or heard anything, anything of substance with him and that best friend doing anything. So. I hear that. Uh, Glenn, what's your thoughts to, to Brennan, Emily, you know, the, the whole Australian guy at a bar, he been sleep, he been sleeping with her best friend, apparently, you know, it, it's, there's a lot going on. Talk to it's me. Crazy. It's crazy. Australian thing, she admitted to doing it, right? So she did admit on, on after party, she admitted on uh, the reunion. She looked, I slept, I, I kissed the Australian guy. Well, even Becca agreed to it. Becca knew about it. She said, yeah, it happened. So everybody, we know the Australian thing happened. What woman do you guys know? If, if a guy was cheating with your best friend, don't say anything. You don't say nothing to your husband? That's the part. I agree with Sean. She didn't say anything. So when you, when you got the whiff uh, that your husband was sleeping with your best friend, or try to sleep with your best friend, and you don't say anything. But you talk so much about this double date situation where it broke you down, had you crying, but you don't have a problem with him messing with your best friend. So that's why I think I'm leaning more towards Brennan's side on this on that story. Um, they're, they're toxic, though. They've been toxic since day one. Um, like Brennan said, I think I wish it almost to the point where you wish Brennan would have left week two, as he said. If you'd have left week two, um, you know, wouldn't have had any couples on the show. This season probably ended early. Because by that time, wasn't nobody left. So, you know, he had to be true to who they are. And I'm still like, yeah, they, they're bad. I mean, her her waterworks, her crying, I think, give her the Oscar. Because um, she came, she, she she was entertaining in this part, too. Because everything, she wouldn't let anybody speak. That's how I was thinking, people lying. Because when you don't let nobody tell their story, you don't let nobody open. Every time they try to tell a story, you cut them off. It's something that you want to, don't want them to be, something that you don't want to be heard. So, it, Emily's a lot. And I think he, he dodged one there. Your mute, coach. Sorry. Yeah, they, 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 you know, obviously the conversation flowed on further. Um, she said obviously she was scared to tell him about like Australian guy that she kissed. Um, Lily told her some information. Um, and then... Uh, he said that she threatened him to stay in, threatened uh, him to stay in the marriage. <laughs> he said that she basically let it stay, let, threatened him to stay in the marriage. And then the part that really got me, this is the part that got me. Brother said I wasn't attracted. I wasn't attracted to her. She said, "I believe that's a lie." I said, "Baby, he didn't even sleep with you, okay? He didn't sleep with you. Who are you saying? <laughs> Why are you fighting on him? Fighting him about you don't think he finds you attractive? He listen. He doesn't speak for every other man." If you believe you're a nine and you're, he's a six, why are you begging for the six to find you attractive? He don't find you attractive. Get over it and move forward. But she was forcing it with the delusion. And it was a strong delusion. You know what I mean? You know when the Bible says they prophesied out of their own hearts? Ezekiel 13. That's exactly what happened here. Because, sis, what are you hearing from heaven? Because it surely isn't the Lord's voice. Because a brother done told you, I didn't find you attractive. Did I? And he had to sit her down. She still didn't believe it. And told her straight to our faces, I don't believe that. Baby, he didn't even want to kiss you after. No one wanna have sex with you. Baby, he didn't find you attractive. And it's okay. We've all been there. We've all suffered when someone tells you they don't like us. But you ain't gotta let you ain't gotta sit there and fight him and tell him you don't think that he you think that he found you attractive. He told you out of his mouth he didn't. What's your thoughts on that, Sean? Yeah, listen, and this is why, and I'm not justifying what he did because he should have just been straight up out the gate and honest, like, hey, once I started to hear a little bit about your past, it, it was too much for me, you know? And and they're, 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 they're guys like that, that it don't matter how pretty you are. Because he did say, if you listen to him, he said, you know, I did find you attractive. But the more I got to know about you and hear things, then it, I got turned off. And it happens. It's the it's the reality. Some people can look past certain things. Some people can't. I know me. I'm I'm the same way. So that's why as soon as he he was, you know, I saw his attitude. I could pin it because if I don't feel like we're on the same page or there's some things that you might have been into, that's just not for me. It just might. Hey, some people can be like, oh, it don't matter to me. I don't care. Your past is your past. Now, nah, for me, I'm considerate of that. 
I'm sorry. That's just my attitude about it. And that's exactly what happened. Now, he should have been honest with her and told her, but this is what's happened. After she's had all this time to see and sit with it, she still doesn't believe it. So that's why he's like, I don't want to get into this back and forth on TV with this woman who is unhinged. He could see she's unhinged. He's like, so I don't want to get into a back and forth with her because she's not gonna, she's not gonna listen. And then you know what's gonna happen with the experts. They're gonna gaslight him, stay, work it out. Let's see how it goes. Maybe try some intimacy exercises. Let's start playing with sex toys. So he was like, no, 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 I don't want to do none of that. We just gonna milk this. And you know, listen, she's I can see her. I still want to work it out. I still want to try to make it work. The whole way. She's been saying that all the episodes, and this guy is giving her the cold shoulder. But she's looking at herself and thinking she's a pretty blonde, pretty blonde, you know. But hey, he, he wasn't for it. Fair enough. Go for it, Glenn. Yeah, she didn't read the room. Um, I think I think what it comes from is this: she has never been in a serious relationship, and she used to giving up her cookies, right? She used to giving up the goodies. Everybody who's messed with her has always got the box, right? They always got to be with her. They always, you know, they was always intimate with her. Now she has a man who's not. He's not intimate with you. He's not into you like that. And you're like, oh, this must be something wrong with him. No, it's something wrong with you. As Sean said, he didn't like what he was seeing. He didn't like the attitude. He didn't like the fact that you was drinking too much. He didn't like the fact that you was a gossip. He didn't like, he didn't like all this other stuff that he saw within a matter of a couple of days. And he was like, you know what? Don't want to be with you. Don't want to do it. So let me create this narrative. And we just play this game for the next nine weeks. I keep, um, well, at least next uh, few weeks. And, um, and I'll collect these paychecks. So, again, she couldn't believe that someone didn't like her. You're not all that. You're not. And now maybe other people have told you all that. If you was like that, this wouldn't have been your first serious relationship. Your first serious relationship wouldn't have been married on first sight. It would have been other relationships that have been serious that lasted for a long period of time. But your low self-esteem and yourself where you're at, you have to give it up. Remember, this is the same girl who met a guy, Australian guy and kissed him in a bar. So, again... Why would this dude want to be attracted to you if he sees the qualities and the characteristics already? And what he said was, your friends told me that you have a multiple one night stance, that your friends said that this is what you do on a consistent basis. This is what you like to do. And he said, that's when he's like, you know, who am I married to? Like, I really don't want to be with this person. So her friends, according to Brennan, gave her up and she just couldn't understand it. Go for it, you say that. Go for it. Yeah, I think you know the, the the problem that he had too was he was so overly concerned with your image. And I think this is what this season taught a good example of, you know, what you do in the dark will come out in the light. And you spend so much time trying to not be something, you become it. And Brennan was definitely overly concerned with his image and trying to control the narrative and we got to really see his personality unfortunately but you know when it comes to to you know to emily i don't i think she she just thought you know that she was going to look a particular way i guess she thought like hey it's going to look he's going to look bad because i can see his flaws but she forgot to look in the mirror and see her flaws and we got to see her fully exposed, especially more towards the end when her plan didn't 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 uh, come out the way she thought it was. And when you literally, you know, I think what Brennan did wasn't good, but he was just more so trying to not look bad. Emily was trying to make him look bad. And when you spend your energy trying to make somebody else look bad, you really expose yourself. And I think that's exactly what happened. And, and she was, that's why she kept folding, you know? And, and that whole point when she was talking to Kevin and she was like, listen to the women. You need to listen to the women. I don't understand why we're questioning this. What do you mean? Like, what are you talking about, lady? We, we shouldn't question when there's a sea of lies. We should just believe what you say. Why? Because you're, you're a woman? No, no, it doesn't work that way, lady. You're, you know, like, I think she was like playing on like, narratives and stereotypes trying to trump up sympathy and she just got exposed yeah I, i'm gonna call it and i'll be in trouble y'all get mad at me she she pulled that white privilege 
Oh, she, she tried to pull a white privilege on, on Kevin. He was like, you supposed to believe us. We're white women. We're telling you. I'm telling you what happened. You know, I'm telling you this story. You're supposed to believe us. Nah, I mean, I mean you can't believe everything. Because there's two sides to every story, right? And like I think Brendan said it on, we all, everything we say can't be a lie. And again, you went along with it. At the beginning, let's be honest. Everybody went along with the story. Everybody went along and said, let's, let's do producers. Let's do the, the, the uh, viewing audience. And then somewhere down the line, they say, you know what? It is not working. But I really want a husband. Well, he already, by that point, he already told you he's not attracted to you. He doesn't want you. There's no intimacy. There's nothing that's going on. So let it ride. Let it play. Ride your time out and, and get it done. But she couldn't take that. Um, and, and that's the, my biggest thing. Where on Brendan's side, to your point, Sean, when you're trying to, you know what you signed up for? That's Because you signed up for a reality TV show. You signed up for Married at First Sight. You've seen this. You're better off being who you are. You're better off saying, you know what? I don't. People get mad at Chris Williams for being who he was, but Chris was who Chris is. But if you're Brennan, I don't like you. I don't like you, but we can be friends. I don't like you, and we can be friends throughout the show. And that's where he. Gotta, that's why he should have kept it at from day one. You know what? I'm not attracted to you, but you know what? You're not. Gina and Clint from uh, Tennessee. They told everybody, and we don't like each other, but we can be friends throughout these rest of these weeks. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna chill. We're gonna do bull rodeos together. What not, but at the end of the day, we're gonna say no. Everybody knew they were gonna say no, but we're gonna be that. That's how you carry it. And he should have been himself and carried it that way. So yeah, delusional city. Yeah, it's delusion, it's it's the, the strong delusion for me. Um, but you know, I think um, you know, I think uh the the craziest thing is like I said, it's it's um you know, Emily just seemed to have this chip on her shoulder. And I get that Brennan wasn't all the way honest. He wasn't. We, we, we'll be honest about that. But Emily just seemed to have this chip on her shoulder. Um, and I think that the, the rejection that she suffered from Brennan was very, very painful. Right? Um, and I think there's some deeper work that needs to be done here from Emily. Because reality is that maybe you've been having such one night stands because you can't really connect to somebody. And you chose this process to be able to connect. You get on this process and the person who's meant to connect with you doesn't connect. And that really stings you and, you know, kind of shatters a little bit of your self-worth and your um, self-esteem. And so now you're kind of attacking Kevin because you thought that he was coming at you. He wasn't. Or any of the ladies, um, you know, and, you know, I felt like she was a little bit overboard. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit overboard um, in the way that she was responding to uh, Kevin as well and the way she was responding to Brennan. But. Yeah, I, I saw it and I was like, mm, okay, you need you need a little bit of help here, baby. Okay, because the way you see in the world, that's not how we seen it. Okay, and um, you know she was. Uh, I want some beans. Yeah, no. Um, she, after that part, I want to see. I have my notes. I mean, did you want to be honest? Yeah, I felt like obviously with their situation as well. Um, you know, I felt like with their situation, there was no again from her perspective. No real accountability. Uh, look, Brennan apologised to Dr. PR. Did we hear her apologise to Dr. PR? Nope. Did we hear any of the ladies apologise? Nope. Yet yeah, they were calling the boys, you know, ringleaders, but the girls have forgotten that they went along with the ringleaders. So you're still going to be culpable for what you did. You know what I'm saying, Chu? So you can't hide behind a veil of, they told me to. At the end of the day, you went along with a plan, whether it's because you thought you want to, you want to quote unquote protect them really and truly or whatever, whatever. But... You didn't, you went along with the plan, so you got to be you got to be accountable for your part of the action. But she hasn't been, and so for me personally, I'm like that. What kind of growth has growth has Emily or some of the girls actually shown? Because you couldn't even you couldn't even deep the fact that in this moment, even with Doctor Doctor Pia and um, uh, you know a resident doctor and pastor and um, you know for one, I don't know why her name's got out of my head. You know, you, you you didn't apologize. You doubled down and said it's a boy's fault. It's the boys that were doing this, and you know, um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's just like you were trying to hold Brennan accountable. And he actually, even towards the end, admitted where he went wrong. The girls questioned him, you know, and he kind of admitted where he had gone wrong and admitted that you know that he was wrong for that, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But did we hear anything from from Emily? No, not an ounce, not a drop. You hear me? So yeah, no accountability on Emily's part. Um, on that part as well. Any more thoughts on the, the Emily and Brennan part? Um, I just thought 
the other thing about like where people might be saying, oh, well, how could he be scared of her? And I think this is this is a way that men can be scared of women. It's not a physical threat. It is the threat of what you can say, how you can make up things and twist my words and use them against me. You know, so this is an example of, you know, that that dangerous part. And that's why, you know, early on, you know, I said toxic femininity, because that's when women can take their use their 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 powers of persuasion and use it against the man. And I think that's exactly what she you know, he saw that she had the capability to do because and and that's why she was so enraged at the end, because she was like, what do you mean you're not going to believe me? What do you mean I'm saying these things and you're 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 trying to make me, um, you know, out to be a liar? Why are we questioning what we're saying? You should just take our words. Yeah, no, not at all, baby girl. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Sean, especially when you have the whole narrative been on camera, off camera, on camera, off camera, on camera, off camera. And all it took with her to say, oh, he did this to me off camera. Or he did this to me off camera. He did this. And his whole narrative or his whole storyline is totally different. Um, and so she has, I can see why he was kind of nervous. Because, again, he uh, the same goes back to why he told her, you know what, can you please delete that diary cam? Like, I wouldn't know what she was going to say. It was must have been something that was really going to put him uh, in a bad light. Uh, and again, it's been about image. When you have somebody who's about image, they want everything to look right. And she knew that he was about image and he knew that she had the gun and that he doesn't do kind of conform to what she wants or walk that fine line that she was going to bury him, that she had the ability to bury him uh, in the public eye. But she got loose. She she wasn't able to keep it together. And when she partnered up with Claire, it made it look even worse. And I, y'all help me out. I, I'm kind of confused. Where does Lauren come into all this? Because her marriage didn't last but seven days. Like, where where was the manipulation from your part that you can really solidify with these girls? Do they try to manipulate you? Like, you was married like a whole seven days, but you was bonded with them? I was confused. Yeah, definitely. And I think I, I think the reality of the situation is we got to we got to see Brennan in and how bad he was and I, I that doesn't take away from Brennan I said Brennan was you know we saw the controlling aspect but guess what he saw that too and apologized for it right what we didn't get to see was some of Emily's antics all the way through but we never heard no accountability I think that's a big difference I think that shows how much Emily hasn't grown uh, maybe I shouldn't say maybe hasn't grown no, no let me say that there's a lack of growth there from Emily a little bit as well because you know the the she wanted she wanted to nail him to the cross and the reality of the situation listen Brennan is wrong because he should have been honest about it and had he been honest about it we might not have got this far um along the way process right um but like I said this man was dragging his heels from the beginning okay pretty much so um but yes you know she wanted to nail him to the cross and wanted him to be held accountable and i was like babe he's actually apologizing for some of this stuff that he actually did but you haven't done apology for anything you have done so at this point conjuncture what else what, you know you're you're getting upset getting annoyed and the problem is as well also too is that when they actually start telling their stories we don't get to hear the rest of it I never get to hear the rest of the story. Whenever Brennan is explaining, I never get to hear the finished end article of it. Well, if you keep interrupting, I'm going to have to look at you like you're the problem. Because if I can't finish off my story, how the hell am I meant to make a deduction that he's telling the truth? Right? We're gonna make, we ain't going to make a deduction. Do you know what I mean? So we need to be able to, able to assess what he's saying so we can actually weigh it up all the way through. But if every time he starts telling a story, you lie, you lie, you lie. Like, well, at, at this point in time, I need to know what he's saying to know what he's lying. We don't know. If he's, I don't know if he's lying. How can I know if he's lying if he ain't finished off his point? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Let him get to the end of the story. And I saw that, you know, they, the other ladies did that too. And it's like, well, we're not going to get nowhere if you're always going to interrupt. This is a safe space. Kevin is there. Kevin can stop them from, stop, you stop, uh, you know, if, if Kevin's there um, as well. So, you know, you, you don't have to think, don't worry about, oh, he going to talk and spin it. Like, he going to tell the truth. Like, if you really listen to what Brennan really said, all he's, uh, all he's really, all he did was tell his truth, right? All he did is tell the truth. 
And I'm just going to be honest with you. If you can't accept the fact that he didn't think you were, you, you know, he didn't find you attractive later on, and you can't accept it now, you'd have never accepted it in the time. Like I'm not saying he's right for what he did. You know what I'm saying? To you. He's still wrong for hiding the truth, for not telling her the truth, for mishandling her, mistreating her. He was wrong. But he actually came out and apologized at the end. And he also admitted that ways that he did things were wrong, right? But if you can't even accept the fact that he told you that he doesn't find you attractive now, and you think, oh, he definitely is, and you're, you're piping up with the, well, I'm a nine and you're a six, him telling her then would not mean it, would not, would have ended badly. Okay, would have ended definitely badly as well. So, yeah. You going to say something, Sean? Yeah, um, I guess I saw something in there that he gaslit her. He definitely did not gaslight this woman. You know, he didn't gaslight her. He may not have told her 100%, hey, this is why I don't like you. But it, 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 she, you, come on. What, what, how many words did Brennan say to her? <laughs> how many words did we see him say to her trying to, to sell her on anything? He Half the time he wanted to be out. You know, he wanted to leave. You know, where I did see him be a little manipulative is in the end, <laughs> after she had that accident, and you might have been checked out by this time, Coach, but after she had her big accident, I saw it. he was trying to, you know, spin it like, oh, you know, I was there for you, I'm helping you. But outside of that, you know, which is using that as an instance to show how much he was, he's a, he's a good person. But I don't see that he was gaslighting that lady. He was just trying to not portray he wanted himself to look good he was more concerned about him than trying to sell her on anything so you know she she led herself down a path of delusion and i think it's like we we see this all the time you have to look at what somebody does you can't just go off of their words this guy as soon as they came back from the honeymoon he wanted to stay in his own house do you think that's somebody that likes you you think that's somebody that's interested in you and just like what you were saying earlier, Glenn, it goes back to this sense of entitlement where you think, oh, because in your mind or maybe traditionally you've always been told you're an attractive person. You just think it just like how she's trying to she keeps saying, I'm not negative. I'm not I'm the happiest person. Meanwhile, she has been spinning out of control, rude, nasty, mean to everybody, not just Brennan. Um, anybody that doesn't, it was a minute she doesn't hear what she wants to hear, she's flipping out. Oh, Lynn, Lynn, Lord have mercy. Not that you believe all the women. Oh, my goodness. No, no, no. No, we can't do that. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do that. Like I said, there are two sides of every story, all the women. But again, we got to your point. You know, Emily was. Um, a train wreck, and I think Claire was there to support her, and it being the train wreck that she was in, and, and and steering that that ship. You know what was happening to the time when, when you said you was divorced and married at first sight? They didn't show you anymore. They sent you home. You moved out the apartment. You got away from everybody. I guess they couldn't do this season or this season would end it early. But if you take Lauren and Claire, I mean, yeah, Lauren and Claire out of the situation and leave the other couples be, they might have had something salvaged. But Back to Emily and Brennan real quick. Anytime the guy keeps telling you we're resetting to be friends, not resetting to be husband and wife, but we're going to reset so we can be friends, it should tell you enough already. It should tell you enough. Definitely hear that. Um, all right. Any, other, any last thoughts before I move on to the next couple? No. If you want to say something, sure? Uh, let's talk, obviously, the next big couple, Cameron and Claire. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this, Cameron and Claire. Was Cameron uh, ringleading and causing all the men to come together uh, around the night's table and make a decision about how they're going to move their wives from here on out? I mean, bear in mind, none of the wives got any sex. I mean, these men were really dedicated to celibacy on this uh, show. Probably one of the best bunch of group of men who are not going to lead these women with, uh, you know, uh problematic d you know what i mean like they made sure listen we ain't gonna have that on our namesake okay all right uh what's your thoughts to, to the um to the mandem in terms of uh Cam cameron and uh claire and ledette well listen cameron was trying to give up the d 
to Claire very early on, but Claire didn't want it. So she wants to sit up here and spin her lies and tell her that tell us that she was attracted to him. We could visibly see that she wasn't attracted to this guy with his spiders and his antics. You know, we 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 know this stuff. Like, come on, lady. Like, and 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 and, and we could understand if you just were honest. But she she tried to play the game and then tried to pin it all on him. It's like, nah, ma'am, you didn't want to look bad either because you didn't want to be the one rejecting him and make it look like, you know, you were checking out. So you liked the plan. You liked the fact that they were able to, you know, he was able to use, um, you know, his illness as a way to get out. And then you sat up here with all these phone calls pretending, oh, how are you? He doesn't want me to come see him. You, you're speaking on his behalf. It was all very performative. You know, he's and, and he's definitely not an innocent. I don't think Cameron is innocent, but I do think Cameron liked her. You know, he kept trying to get closer and closer to her. And she she rebuffed him. And he was like, all right, I'm not going to I'm not going to keep getting played on this camera like this because I see where it's going. Let's come up with a plan. So we all come out ahead. So I think the two of them are definitely the ringmasters of let's come let's come together and figure out a plan. I definitely believe that. And if Claire wants to make me think like, oh, she's just a wounded damsel that Cameron took advantage of her, she's too smart for that. And I don't buy it. I don't buy not one lick of it. Her with the tears, her sitting where her legs crisscross in the chair like that shows me that she was crashing out too. Yeah, I agree with you, Sean. I think both of them had a role in it. I think both of them uh, devised this plan together um, and then uh, rolled it out. And everybody agreed with it. She agreed with it until it started burning her. You know, I think uh, Cameron did want to be with her, right? He did like her in his weird type of way. Uh, he did want to, he wanted some attraction. Uh, he wanted to, to have sex with her. And just based off the comments earlier uh, in the season, the things that he was doing, um, he, he is a little quirky, but I think he's very intelligent too. You think he's very smart. He's very uh, calculating in the way he says things and how he does things. Um, she's calculating as well. And so you had two puppet masters, him controlling some of the guys. She's controlling some of the women. And now uh, and everybody agreeing with it. And them two saying, you know what? Let's 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 still get our checks. Let's just still try to get this money. Um, but her feelings got hurt because nobody, I don't care how it is, no one likes to be called a liar, right? Um, and she didn't like to be called a liar, but she's caught up in the game. It's like when you get caught up you rob a bank, you do something, you're a kid, you get in trouble, and now you want to, you got caught in the cookie jar. Now you want to blame it on the other person, the oldest person, everybody else, and act like you didn't do anything wrong. She did just as much wrong as Cameron did. Y'all y'all orchestrated the whole divorce scene. One, two, three, divorce, right? Uh, you, you talked about that earlier. So at this point, everybody's in cahoots. Why blame it on, why one person have to be the ringleader? If I'm the ringleader, and I ask everybody to get along with it, and all of y'all go go along with it. We all just as wrong, whether it's my idea or not. We just we just all at fault, and that's what I think Kevin was trying to say. Everybody plays a role in this. And just not put it on Cameron. Let's not just put it on Brennan. Let's not put it on Claire, Emily. It was everybody got involved. Everybody agreed to do to dupe the producers. And everybody. So everybody's at fault. Stop pointing fingers at this person did this. Well, I did only I only did this part right here. They only did this part right here. We all did it together. So guess what? Everybody's in fault. Everybody's in trouble. I mean, everybody did it. So back to your question, Coach. Cameron might have came up with the idea, him and Brennan, but everybody else ran with it. Everybody else ran with it. Might have been a mob boss. You know, I think about the mob. Everybody sitting at the table. Don Corleone, you know, and uh. He, he got the plan. I need you to do this. Need you to do that. You know, go from there. Absolutely. You know, there's the captains, right? So there's all the people that are, you know, following the orders, but they're all complicit. And when the when that when when the federal case comes, everybody gets it. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, everybody gets it. Yep. So. And Tyra's world had a good a good comment. 
is that, um, you know, listen, when, when kids get just another thing, you know, they start snitching like, oh, you did it and you did it and this is you and this is you. But I think they miscalculated with Cameron because he's holding so many cards <laughs> and he's the collector of so much information. And what we saw all along throughout the season is Claire and him were definitely in cahoots because he's getting all this different information from Claire, too. And he's just spitting it back out, spitting it back out. And the ladies are like, oh, 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 he knew that, he knew that. And he, and he ain't giving up none. He ain't give, He's getting all the information, but he's not giving up yeah. none. Anything he knows, he's not giving up none. He's just collecting everything that they give up, and he's just using it back on them. And like, yeah, you said this. You said that he even covered for his board. Now we wouldn't try to do a double date. That was my idea. I that was my idea. I take the fault. I take the bullet for this one. All right. That was on me. You know, and then he said, you know what? He would his heart thing, his heart flutter. And I, I gotta find I got a way to bow out for a minute. I got a way to take a rest. Uh, you know, I got a way to, you know, to to move off camera and they can't follow me. You know, HIPAA violation. They I'm gonna move this way because I don't want them to show my medical stuff. So he decided, you know, decided to make a move. But yeah, everybody's everybody's guilty here. Um, if they would have played this, if if they would have not talked off camera and talked all this stuff on camera, this season might have been interesting. If we saw how this would play out on camera and they was having these discussions, you know, which I kind of blame Meredith for a sight a little bit because you got these cameras inside these apartments. Where were these conversations being had outside the apartment? You know, like they had no one slipped up and talked about it inside the apartment where the hidden cameras and stuff are. That was always amazing to me how the season went along and nobody slipped up inside the apartment. Hey, they knew when when to say what, and some of it was via text message. Yeah. You know, and and listen, I, I think, and this is the effect of a, a really good lie, and we've seen this play out in um in other shows, and we shall not say the, the show or the person, but when you take a little bit of truth. And then you just stretch it out. You know, you just wrap yeah. it in a lie. You take a little piece of truth and then you wrap mm -hmm. it in a lie. So, yeah. yeah, was he ill? I believe so. But did he did he have to leave the process? Was that the contributing factor? Those are all the things that are shrouded in something else. Right. And I could, you know, it, it's like if we would have just been a little bit more authentic. Then what? True. But I, yeah, I just I, think I, like. This season was also so badly matched that we wouldn't have really had much of anybody to watch because really nobody liked each other. Yeah, and that's the, and that's the shocking part at the beginning. Nobody really liked each other. Um, you know, O'Ryan said he liked Lauren, but we kind of I kind of knew that wasn't going to make match work out anyway. Um, Becca and Austin could have worked if he was a little bit more honest and transparent, but the other ones, I don't think so. Um, not not at all. Um, you know, and but back to Cameron and his heart thing. I live with a nurse, and she was like, "Hold up, he had what?" It's like, nah, that's an outpatient thing. He did what? Like he did a nah, it can't be that long. I'm like, hey, I'm just going by what the guy says because there was a little bit of, you know, you can tell there was a little bit of truth into that, and he everything wasn't truthful, but everybody played along with it. Everybody played along with the fact that hey, he has this production. Didn't want, didn't, nobody wanted a lawsuit, so they say, you know what, we need to go along with it too. You know, and that's the and that's the biggest thing is that they're pulling strings, giving us what they want us to, and made it bad. It just made it bad. Every each week was something bad. Storylines didn't go together. It was just terrible. And that's the and that's the thing. These people are, um, and you know, some people say, "Wish the man at first sight get their money back and sue." What point? Just let them go. Let them ride into the sunset, and we can never hear from them again. Um, at this point. So. Exactly. And I think like if you want to if you want if we want to get stuck at, oh, he was lying about his medical health. Right. Or he was misrepresenting some aspects of his health. And that's it. Then then you this is not you, this is not what we do on Little Black Book. No, so we just going to get stuck on the fact that Cameron is lying. So that means all the women are absolved of anything. You've got to be kidding me that we've never we've never performed any analysis like that. You don't just stop there. It's not just that. This woman was going along. She did not like him. At all. And, and him leaving benefited her because it meant she didn't have to fake. You know, she admit that she, every time you saw when he was, because in the very beginning of the process, let's begin at the beginning, when they were just getting to, to know each other and they were getting back to the, the shared apartment, 
he kept trying to make advances to her. As awkward as it was, he was trying to make advances to her. And not to say she should, she's obliged to be receiving of them, but she was not interested. She was not. You can see how awkward it was. She kept dodging him, you know, making up excuses, creating distance. Those are all the signs that she was not attracted to him. That's and not she how didn't somebody even know, behaves. And she didn't even know he put her, all his arm around her. The girl, other females had to tell her, you know, he did put his arm around you. He did have his arm around you. He was showing some intimacy. He was showing some uh, some care and kindness. You didn't. She didn't even recognize it. That which lets you know she wasn't really into him at whatsoever. And she tried to play it off and saying, well, I, I stopped being into him when he woke up the first morning and says, um, I forgot that you were there. Now, that might have been a backhanded comment, you know, but at the same time, you're trying to work on this thing. I think it's my that's my biggest issue. You're married. You signed up for this show. And five days in, two days in, you already quit. Like, you're not even going to work on this. At least work the process, right? Go through the motions. Go through the process. Go through what the experts say. Trust the process. And if it doesn't work out after the eight weeks, so be it. At least you can say I gave it 100%. At least you can say I didn't try to dupe anybody. At least you can say, uh, you know what? It got, we tried. It just didn't work. And it's okay. Like I think Pastor Cal said it. It's okay if it doesn't work. At least go through the process and don't fool anybody. Just go, hey, you know what? We didn't kiss. It didn't work out. Uh, you didn't hold my hand. Let's talk about why Why are we holding hands on camera? Why are we doing th this on camera? Why are we not kissing? Why are we not snuggling? Why are we not cuddling? Why are you sleeping in the other bedroom? Have those type of discussions on there so at least we know what it is. And I think that's where everything messed up at was they try to hide all that stuff when it was dysfunction. It was dysfunction in your relationship. And it's okay. that They matched dysfunctional couples because Denver had a small pool of people. Denver had a very small pool of people. I don't, I think sometimes only that reason Orion and Lauren was matched because they had to meet a quota. They had to have African American on the show. And all right, who do we match her with? Let's find a guy. You know, that's one of the things that you know was tough. Where did Hector Kojo go? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> he dipped. He didn't even uh, say that. <laughs> Kojo. <Shoot. laughs> you leaving us here twisting right. in the wind, brother. Where are we where are we supposed to go next here? <laughs> man, look, look, ain't my channel. <laughs> Orion and Lauren, <laughs> you want to tell any talks? <laughs> this is like the reunion. We, we just, you know, left to, to left to run them up. Yeah, yep. no. So I, I mean. Look, and, and, and again, I'm going to say Cameron, you know, he, he was an odd character. So I don't know why Claire couldn't just be honest and just verbally say it. She kept trying to put it on him. And whenever people do stuff like that, it just reads, everybody has been saying all along, she looks manipulative. If you look all across social media, everywhere, they're like, no, 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 we're not buying anything she's saying. Because every time we see her, you know, after he left the the process, she's like, Cameron, I'm I'm so I really want to be there for him. I really want to be there, but he doesn't want me to come. You cared about him that much. If 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 you're in the hospital, I'm gonna come see you. I'm gonna come see you. Probably because it was an outpatient procedure and there was no hospital to go to, and she knew it, but she's mm -hmm. trying to play. You know, she just trying to play. It was an outpatient procedure, and 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 but if how many sick people do you know don't want somebody to come visit them, more or less their spouse? Bring me some soup. Bring me some something. When the dude who's sick, and I'm gonna use him on his deathbed, had to be brought back three times. Don't want you to see him. There's a problem. There, there's a big. I don't know different laws, but you know y'all married, so technically if he had passed away. A lot of that stuff probably would have been yours anyway, based, just based off the law. You know, so I need to talk to you. We need to have a conversation at least just on that point, you know, if, he, if he's about to die. Um, but it's um, she needed to, she wanted to validate who she was and not validate him at all and chalk his weirdness up as being, I don't, instead of telling him, I don't like him, I don't like you, let's be messy and mess with everybody else. Because I still think, she ended Becca and Austin's relationship 
towards the end of the show with some of her comments and some of the things that she was involved in. Even on the, uh, the retreat, she was involved in Lauren and Orion's situation. Like she knew everything about everybody. She knew everybody talked to the therapist, right? Everybody talked to Claire. Everybody gave Claire uh, the, the, the juice or gave Claire the tea. And Claire was willing to spill the tea. Claire was willing to give the tea to everybody else. Um, and that's the I think that's the thing that messed up Cameron. And that's why Cameron knew everybody business because Claire was getting it. And that's that's the only thing they could bond over was everybody else's gossip. They couldn't bond over anything else, but they could bond over everybody else's gossip. And how do we fool everybody else? It was no romantic love there, no cuddling there, no holding hands. You went eight weeks with somebody and y'all didn't hold hands, didn't kiss, didn't have any type of intimate moment whatsoever. That's weird. I mean, it's just weird to me. And, and can't, can't see why. And isn't Claire the one who, like, brother passed away? And so you're supposed to be the one who's empathetic, you know? She, yeah, because she's from a family. So empathetic, show some empathy for the guy. Have some love and compassion. Find out what's going on. You're a therapist. Find out what's going on with him mentally, you know? But each his own. Everybody yeah. thinks Cameron was lying. He's not lying about everything. He's not. He can't be lying about everything. Everything's not a lie. I think that's what Kevin was at. We don't know what's. I think Dr. P, uh, Dr. Pepper, or Pastor Cal said it. You can't figure out what the truth is because no one ever told their story, the full stories. So, don't know. Yeah, thank you, Deborah. Because this is yeah. She just kept getting tripped up. She kept getting tripped up in what she was doing she wasn't consistent and again i'm not saying i'm not saying cameron was uh you know was an innocent in all of this right because we saw this moment too you know miss ward um he was you know he said all this negative stuff about her and then he was playing this game in the last episode talking about um oh maybe you know maybe something could work that was completely I don't, I don't know why he was even playing games with that, whether he was just trying to trip her up, whether he was trying to call her out and see what she would say since she was over here saying she was attracted to him. I don't know what type of manipulation tactic that was when he was like, yeah, I could see giving another chance. I don't know what lie he was spinning or where he was going with that. Yeah, that one that had, my, had me scratching my head too. Like, dog, you just said all this about her, that she was sleeping with her best friend. Uh, two days afterwards, and then you gonna say, "Hey, by the way, but can we get another shot for what? Why she? What do you want another shot for? Are you that pressed? Like you can't find anybody else? And I, I don't know how much, how long the reunion has been since there was it six months after the you know last tape or whatever case may be. Let it die. Let that let the let it go. Y'all probably haven't talked to each other, haven't seen each other, but you want another shot, another opportunity. Come on, can't. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you, Sean. Where was he going? What, what, what was the point of that? Like, what was the point of that saying, you know what? And if she would say yes, how long would that really have lasted? Yeah. I, uh, and, and, and I think a couple of people said it. Yeah, she's, she, he was just calling her bluff and trying to call her out because we, we could see he's manipulative. And I think they, they, they got together. And that's why they got into solidarity in this pink color. And they said, we know who to pin it on. We're going to put it all on Cameron. And we're just going to hang it, hang it, hang the hat on him because he he has come up with a lot of ideas and given us, you know, and, and been the way that we could kind of easily back out of this process, but still stay on camera. Because that's what it seems like they wanted. And especially Claire. She just wanted to be on camera, wanted to be in the mix, wanted to have this little friendship. But did you hear the part when um, I think I don't know if it was Brennan or or Cameron that said it. I think it was Brennan that said it. He was like, but Emily did. Yeah, he, it was Brennan. He said Emily didn't even like Claire anyway. Like, yeah, she didn't I did like hear her. <laughs> <laughs> it like going to a break. It was like one of those moments like, it's like he didn't like her anyway. Like I was the one who, who made them be friends or facilitated that relationship. Like, I wish I hadn't done it. Yeah, they didn't. And now everybody, they're all in cahoots together. And, yeah, it should have been – I agree with some of the uh, people in the chat. When you divorce and you say, I'm done, 
You need to be done. Production, stop following you around, seeing you back to your house. We see you at the reunion because you're done. Move. They, they still let her stay in the apartment. That's the thing. So back to you. She wanted to be on TV. She wanted to. They wasn't friends. She's like, girl, let's let's bond together. When? Why? Who? Where? What? For what? You know, the best the best person on this show is the bride who didn't show show up. The best that's it. The bride who didn't show up, she got the W. And we'll never know who she is, but she got the W. Because even Chloe looked bad at times with her 500 sheep and goat and foster kids. Nobody's going to put up with Nobody's going to do it. That scared, I think that scared Michael away. When she was like, I like to have 500, you know, 500 animals and, and five foster kids. He was like, nope, I'm tapped out. That's not me. That's not my dream. That's not what I want. Maybe one, maybe a cat, a dog, a goat here or there. But you want a whole, mm -mm, that's not me. So, it, <laughs> yeah. Chloe. Yeah, I guess we could just move it on down to, to Chloe and uh and Michael. And they they listen, they were the they, they they were the best couple, you know. Although I think Michael either I don't know if he had trauma from being left at the altar the first time or unresolved issues. There was so much chaos and 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 so many other issues we didn't really get to dig into much of his stuff, other than the jewelry and all that stuff he was, you know, carrying on with. And the and the women's clothes and stuff. I don't think we got to dig into much of Michael and his past to to understand like what led him to be him and 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 maybe why he didn't choose Chloe. Um, but he didn't even tell her. Again, this is where we you know we we're holding things back. And I think Chloe, even at the the decision day, she said there's certain things that I thought that I wanted, but I'm not necessarily fixed to those things. So. You know, I think if if that was it, then he should have had a conversation with her because all those goats and cows and farms and foster kids that are teenagers, that's a lot to, to deal with. You know, that's a lot. And she wanted that house that was almost five thousand dollars a month to rent. You know, I think that they, they needed to get on the same page if that's what it was. But he never really said. He just left us to assume. And he still didn't clear it out in the end. And that's the other thing that kind of bothered me with Michael. Oh, so many words. All these words. Bro, what are you talking about? Like, what are you saying? Make it plain for me. It's just too many words and this and that and the blah, blah, blah. What? What are you saying? Like, I wish I could have thought about it. And she brought so much to the process. And she was such a safe landing space. bro. Talk to me plain. Like, what are you saying? Why did you say no? It's too much. It's, it's like listening to a sermon and the preacher saying 50 million words, right? Or using, you know, using, using $1 words and, you know, but again, Michael used too many words. Again, I agree with you, Sean. Just tell me why. Was it, was it that you thought she was out of your league, right? Do you think it was too much? Do you think she was too conservative for you, Right. If she might have been too conservative. She may not have liked the the uh, the way that you dress or you wear jewelry or she didn't feel comfortable bringing you around her family. Uh, she might have mentioned that to you off camera. Right. Just say that, you know, you're trying to stay positive and you want everything to be positive in here. But at the same time, you said no for a reason. She said yes. She was willing to work a little bit longer at this. Why was you wasn't willing to work a little bit longer? Now, you got the goodies. She did all the extra favors for you. Uh, you know, y'all did all the other stuff. And then you just pop up and say no. I get it, but at the same time, I don't get it because you never gave us any answers. Like, was it because she, um, well, like I said, was it because the sheep, the goat, the kids, uh, too educated, uh, just didn't fit into your league? Was it because you had trauma from the last bride leaving you at the altar, or was it the fact that you want you thought you wanted to be married, but you really, once you got married, you're like, you know what, this is a lot of work. Well, marriage is work, right? I, I, I've been married for a while, but I don't have cameras around me and production crews telling me to get up to have forced questions. So, but it, it still work, and you got to put it. It's nothing. It's not like a fairy tale thing that you see on TV. And I think and he's always apologetic. If you ever look at him, he's, when he talks, he's always apologetic to her. I'm sorry, I, but sorry sometimes doesn't cut it. She does. If we haven't gotten answers, I think she hasn't gotten answers neither. Like why didn't she? Why didn't he keep going? And I think that's why the, the experts were scratching their head too. Like, like everything was going so fine, so smooth. Like, where did it go off? 
And if it went off, Michael, it's your fault. And at the same time, you was left at the altar, so now you're going to leave her on decision day? At least give it a shot for a little bit longer. Like, you want an accelerated process. I get it. But let this thing uh, fully come out. And for Chloe's standpoint, uh, you know, be honest with him. Be honest with him up front. Like, hey, I don't like this about you. I don't like that about you. But I feel, think we can work together, husband and wife. And let's, let's at least try after, you know, these eight weeks. But, yeah, he's saying too much of He's saying too much of nothing and not giving it. It sounds good, but it's really not. His his audio is not meeting his video. Yeah. And I, I really liked Chloe. I really, really did. She seemed, you know, so genuine, like a nice woman. And and Michael knows. Tyra's world is cracking me up. <laughs> Michael knows exactly, you know, that he knows that he's a lot to deal with. And it, to me, it looked like she was willing to to make to to make a go at it. And I just wish he could have, you know, given it a shot. And 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 we knew, and she even talked about it too, the fact that he wasn't willing to introduce her to his mom. We knew his heart really wasn't in it. And she said that. She's like, I should have looked at that as a sign and realized it, that you yeah, weren't really sign. committed. Yeah, that's a big sign. When a guy uh, loves you and he don't introduce you to his mom, I know she may not come be able to come to the wedding. And we said that, a couple, I think it was last season, we were talking about Kirsten uh, not introducing Shaq to her, her father. You know what I'm saying? When you really committed to somebody and you really want that person to be in your life, you'll show them to your family members. All right. You'll show them to the person who means a lot to you in your family or the, uh, you know, and that was, that was his mom. Um, I think Chloe was the only person on this show that had a true feeling that I'm going to trust the process, that I'm going to do what this show is as asking me, what they're asking me to do. I'm going to give it my whole heart and I'm going to put everything into it. And whatever I get out of it, I'm going to be satisfied and happy to get it out of get out of it. Um, I don't think anybody else was there. I think Michael was there at first, but I think the the first relationship really broke him. Uh, he didn't know what else to do after that, you know. And I'm glad they kind of did their own thing, uh, and they got away from the other couples, and they was on their own path because I hated for her to get mixed up with the other girls. And and I don't think Michael was gonna. Michael don't seem like he marches to anybody else's beat but his own anyway. So I wouldn't think if there was cahoots that he wouldn't get into it. So yeah, Jennifer, we have we don't know where Kojo is. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> That's the million. That's the million dollar question for the evening. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> just like, just like we don't know what the truth is between you know the men and the women in this season of maths. We don't know where Kojo is right now. We just, you know, we're winging it. We are winging it at this point. But yeah, no, I mean, I think just like listen, it's just a lot of interesting pairs. And I think when we just think about Michael and Chloe. Somebody said it in the chat. I think it was Donna D or someone or Pumpkin. Uh, he should not. He shouldn't have said yes to come back the second go around. I don't think he was ready. I really don't think he was ready. And I think that just that that speaks to just, you know, where you are uh, in your level of, uh, you know, how you've dealt with a breakup. It's just like a rebound right now. Although they never were together. And he never met her. He was prepared to marry somebody. And that particular someone, she just she he met her and turned away. So maybe I don't think he ever fully healed from that. You know, no, I don't, I don't think, think he fully healed from, from, the, from the the trauma of that. Nah, no healing from that. I think production saw the writing on the wall and they had to get another couple in. I'm sorry, I'm just that firm believer that they had to get another couple in. So let's not. Let's go ahead and see if Michael wants to get married again and we bring another girl in. Because remember, at that point, couples were dropping like flies. Uh, um, Cameron had left because of his heart condition with Claire. They had divorced. Um, Orion and Lauren wasn't together. 
Emily and Brendan was on the brink. They had they still were together, but they was on the brink. So you couldn't get down to one couple and just have the show be about Becca and Austin. You had to bring somebody else in. And so I think production went to him like, hey, you want we think we can get you married again. Are you in? Sure, I'm in. Let's do it. And there we had it. And so that's why, you know, Chloe's there. And that's why Michael was there. So we had added so we can add more couples to the show. It would not be down to one couple out of five. Yeah, and 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 I think as as nice as Michael was, and pleasant, and I think Chloe had such a good attitude about it, and she said she doesn't regret anything. I like that she stood on stood her ground and was like, "Yeah, I'm not going. I, I wouldn't want to go back. You know, I wouldn't be open to. You know, I think once, you know, someone says no, then I'm not turning. You know, I'm not turning around and doing a repeat. So I love that she said, "Yeah, I don't regret it, but I'm not going backwards either." Um, but, you know, she really was such a pleasant person. And, uh, you know, I really wanted better for her. I really, I really like, I think Chloe is one of my favorite, you know, she's, she gets my my vote for M MVP across all seasons. Definitely MVP for this season, hands down. But she's one of my favorite um, people. I just like, I like the positive person with an outlook um, on life the way that she does. I may not like everything. I want we don't want the same things exactly, but just her 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 mentality and her mindset was really really appealing. Now, if, if Emily wants to talk about somebody that's very positive, that's her. And yes, she had that horrible accident, and I feel bad for her, and she definitely handled that well. But that's not the signs of somebody that's just completely a positive person. You handled one very horrible incident. You handled it very well, you know, but. When yeah, I think about somebody yeah. that is a positive, great person to be around that I was able to glean, Chloe is that. Yeah, I think so too, Sean. I think she was pure. I think she, again, wanted to commit to the process. You could even see that when the women was jumping up on the men, where she sat at, right, on the reunion. She sat on the other side. She didn't really get involved with none of that stuff they was talking about. When they, after decision day, when it was, they, when her and Michael was still married and they was jumping on Austin. Chloe and Michael stayed out of it. She put her head down. So she was always positive and always looking for the silver lining and everything that was going on. Um, she looked for uh, the good spots and the good points. Even when I think she recognized something wasn't wasn't right, and then she was willing to ask the right questions the right way. Uh, she asked the right questions the right way when she was dealing with Michael. Um, you know, like, what's going on with us? Why are you saying this? Um, you telling me if, uh, if decision day was today, would you say no? Um, and so I guess... She has been um, to the season. She's been one of those, those people that you know what I wish they could rematch her, right? Wish she could get somebody else to rematch her with, uh, and she get a second opportunity to find love, whether it's on Married at First Sight or with uh, somewhere else. Because I think Chloe has a lot to offer a lot of people. I think Chloe has um, uh, could have been a her and Michael could have been a great husband and wife. I think somebody put in chat a minimalist and a person who's a lot a lot of flair and has a lot of things. Um, it could work because she was really compromising to him and she was willing to listen to him and he was willing to listen to her. Um, we just don't know why it went south. So I think she is the MVP of this season um, because she was willing to tell her story and her story just didn't end up with Mike with her husband at the end. Yeah. I think, you know, shout out to her. She really... She really did did her did her big one. So I hope she finds somebody. You know, she was just talking at the reunion that, you know, she's out there and she knows her person is out there. So I really, I really hope that she finds somebody that that aligns with her. I think um who's next? We could talk about Austin and Becca. Yeah. Where do you want to go with them? Uh you mean Austin with the beard or Austin with no beard? I guess both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like he was sick, man. I don't know if he had bubble guts or they had like a rough night or whatever the case may be. He just wasn't feeling good. And you know, he goes and lay down and they're like, Well, at least be up for when they um when the experts come in. By that time he got up and shaved and, and wanted to be um, you know, wanted to be taken care of. So, you know, they're I'm glad they was able to come to some type of um 
resolve and she's kind of comfortable with, okay, I wasn't true to myself. And this is one thing I like about Becca. She like, look what? I agree. I wasn't true to myself and wasn't true to who I was. And that messed up the process. And I shouldn't have went along with what they said. I should have been who I was the whole time. And if I would have been who I was the whole time, it would have been better off. And I would have been better off uh, for be being um, the right person or being um, uh, finding the right soulmate. And I think Austin got caught up in the TVs and caught up in the camera and, and being paranoid and, 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 and caught up in what Brennan was talking about. So, you know what? I don't want to look like this, that, and other. If he had just been himself, like everybody says, his family says he's a nice, sweet, caring, loving person. If he'd have been that, been that on camera, even if he vaped or even if he drank or anything, if he had any vices, just been who you were and everything would have been okay. And I think they would have made it if both of them would have made up in their mind. You know what? We're not going with everybody else's plan. We're going to be Austin and we're going to be Becca and it's going to work out. Yeah. And I think there was a lot of things at play. And if anybody was the most deceptive amongst the men, and I don't think necessarily Becca was in collusion to be, you know, to be deceptive. I think it was, you know, I think it was her. If anybody that's the, the least um, guilty of the women, I think it's Becca. You know, I think she's delusional. I do think she's completely delusional because we could see that he was not into her. And I think perhaps she, and I, I and I said it early on when we started doing the review, and I'm gonna say it now, but just a little nicer, because I think she's a sweet woman. I think she has a kind heart. I think she wanted to protect Austin, whatever secrets he had. I don't know how many and how much was, but Becca, baby girl. This is just an example of when it's not your time, it's not your time, and you can't be forcing things. She had too much going on, all these different ailments, and it's not to say she doesn't deserve love, and I don't want anybody to hear that and, and, and misunderstand what I'm saying, but not in this season. There's to everything, there is a season, and she just wasn't physically, I don't think she was physically ready or mentally ready because I think had she been at her best, she wouldn't have been able to see, oh, this guy's not really about me. But she kept begging and begging and pleading for somebody that clearly wasn't interested in her. And he's, I don't understand what is going on with Austin. I mean, the stomach problems and all of this, that's signs of you got something so deep that you get physically sick. That's how stressed you are at the thought of being confronted. So Austin needs to get some help. With whatever he got going on, shaving his beard ain't going to fix it, brother. You need some serious help to get underneath whatever you faking and running from. Because why you couldn't just say, I don't, I'm not, I, I wasn't interested in her. Why he keeps trying to spin the narrative. Oh, I think I learned that I could have loved her better, bro. You literally, y'all, you guys were at a vacation and you're running to sleep in the bedroom of the host. Because you wanted to see what it felt like to sleep in, sleep in the bed of an NFL player. Like, bro, there is, there is no way you could tell me you're into this woman. Like, all of this foolishness that he's trying to, to say, it, to me, it just makes no sense. He just needs to yeah. cut the crap. And she was holding up lingerie like, look, I'm about to put this on. I'm about to wear this. And you're still running down the hallway to go hop in th this player's bed. Like I, he was, he wasn't into her. Uh, he said he said three to six months. I think I said on our channel, um, you know, you're willing to do everything else, but you just weren't willing to penetrate. Everything else was fair game. You didn't really want to wait three to six months. You just didn't want to. You didn't want to sleep with her because you didn't want her to get really truly attached, or you didn't want decision day to be like, you know what, we did X Y Z for her to say you slept with me. Now you can treat me like this. You wanted to. He wanted to control the narrative in some aspect. And if I don't sleep with her, then I can control the narrative. Um, and so that's what he was trying to do. Um, no, nah, I don't, he's not, he just wanted to, he wanted to control the narrative on how he played with Becca, even with the sickness. And that's the thing I, I talked about too. Um, he was able to hold the narrative about her sickness. We never heard about her sickness that much at all, but she wasn't willing to hold any of his stuff and was willing to spill it out and not accept him for who he was. And I think that was the biggest issue. They couldn't accept each other for who they are. And who they were and they needed to get it done and 
it's really something about her that she really wanted this guy to have sex with her. And that's because he was doing everything else except for having sex. And she was confused. Kojo, are you taking a vow of silence? <laughs> Listen, you, I, I, I ain't got nothing to say. My tiredness is killing me. Okay, all right. I'm gonna need Jesus' strength. Um, listen, I think Becca and Austin. You know, I think she, I think she's probably one of the few ladies that had, you know, had every right to be angry, um, because he dragged her for time. He dragged that situation. Now, of course, obviously, his body, his behavior is obviously in itself an action and. You know, she could have read from that, but you know, he dragged the situation up. Like he really did, like from the very beginning. Um, and so much so that we're trying to think, is he gay? Is he not attracted to her? What 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 which one is it? You know what I mean? Because we don't know because he hasn't uh, explained all the way. Um, so I really do feel like, you know, she got um done dirty um with this situation. I think like it was unfortunate that she had to experience Austin kind of like not being authentic, authentically true. Um, and I wish he did kind of let her know like from the beginning, because again, this is a problem that Brennan had. If you just tell them the truth, we can actually work with it. But he didn't tell her the truth either. You know, he should have let her know, listen, I ain't feeling you. You ain't it. Okay, like I'm just not attracted to you. Instead, we've dragged it all the way to this point here. Um, old girl's hurt, you know, and I get it, you know. Um, so for me personally, yeah, I just felt like he should have um, he should have been honest about it, you know, and then that would have saved a lot of the issues between himself and Becca. I think she's only only one of the ladies I think that has every right to feel some type of way. You know what I mean? I'll keep it short and sweet. Yeah, I'm right there with you, brother, because he definitely he definitely did her dirty. And I think he thought he was doing her a favor, um, but he was really more concerned about himself and how he was going to look whatever he was trying to avoid saying. And I think it just wound up backfiring because it just made it just put more eyes on him because he wasn't saying it, it plainly. You know, and, and listen, everybody knows married at first sight. When you come on this show, you're likely to get. <clears throat> You know, it, it, you know, it looks is not what this show has really been based upon. So if you come onto the show, you know that's the risk you're going to run. Now, how you handle that, it's totally up to you. But you need to handle it. You can't pretend. And I think for him, I definitely see his freaking gaslighting because you keep saying something that you want her to believe. No, no, I really like you. No, no, I did. But she said, she's like, when we were off camera, and I and she came over to hug him. He was like, "Get off of me, horny girl!" Like that's somebody that's not interested. You don't want that. You don't even want her to hug you. You're not interested. So just just be honest. And I think it was just unfortunate. Even up to the last day, he couldn't be honest and just say what it was. So I don't get him. I really, he disappointed me. And I definitely think Becca was done wrong. She, she deserved better. But I think, you know, again, she probably should have sat this one out. I think she should have sat this one out because she just really wasn't ready. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. She wasn't ready. I mean, she had just came off her surgery. She just came off other things. Mentally, I think she was checked out. She wasn't ready to begin in, and he got checked out. Um, and that's just one of those things. And he he, he played her. He played her on camera, um, and we saw that. And just made it look bad. Made him look bad, too, so. Yeah, and I mean, I hope, you know, she's able to build herself back up, and it seems like the maybe the girl squad, I think that's what they're good for. Like, they shouldn't be, you know, doing all this, amping each other up and, and lying to each other and trying to, you know, say we were all victims. But I like their little 
you know, I, they didn't need to really televise it, but I like the fact that they did that little photo shoot where they were in there, they, they, they did the boudoir photo shoot, and they were all complimenting each other and making each other feel good. I think that's where you guys should, you know, make each other, amp each other up and, you know, just rebuild your self-confidence after being through this process. I think that's where the ladies can get together and be encouragement. But like Dr. P told them, Dr. Pia was like, yeah, no, what I'm what I what I don't think you should do is to do this group therapy thing where you all are just playing off of this narrative and, you know, just triggering each other. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was a good part for Dr. Peter to say, like, look, it's good that y'all got this little bond, but there's a time that you got to go work on yourself by yourself. Get in your closet, get in your prayer closet, do what you got to do. And look, let's work on you. Go see your pastor, go see your therapist, go two or three times a week, go see a therapist who is not clear, whatever the case may be, go see and get your mind, your heart and your soul right. And, and the biggest thing is for them, get some forgiveness in your heart. I think that's the biggest thing. Get some forgiveness uh, in your heart because yeah they done you wrong uh you hurt but at a certain point you got to forgive you know we're never gonna forget but forgive them because if you don't ever forgive you're gonna carry that same baggage into your next relationship and then your next relationship is not gonna work because you're carrying baggage from stuff uh that you haven't moved on from and that you're in, in the relationship that you your past relationship and you're gonna be hurt by that even more so because you you got baggage and you can't embrace the person who's trying to embrace you because you're dealing with all this baggage. So that's the healing needs to take place and not with each other. And everybody don't heal at the same rate. So. Tara. Is <laughs> she is going to prove this point, <laughs> but Deborah, Deborah W. I'm not sure. Austin never slept with her. Unless you're talking about somebody else, unless you're talking about Michael and Chloe, because Michael and Chloe are the only ones that were intimate this whole season. Yeah. So maybe Austin maybe you're going back to Michael and Chloe. Yeah, because really, Austin and Becca did a lot of other things. They just never uh, penetrated. Courtney. They didn't do anything sexual. Because she was oh, saying oh. she would even be open to that. You remember the last the last time they talked about it, she was like, I was even open to other things. And, and remember, he was given, um, Dr. Pia said, well, try other things. Are you open to other things? And he never even did it, the other things. I see. Yeah, because on the reunion, he said, well, we did other stuff. Yeah, so that like, means hugging and, and kissing. kissing. Okay, got you. Yeah, they never did anything sexual. Mm. He's a strong man. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Somebody brought up the pegging. Listen, we're not gonna even. I'm not go going. I'm not touching that. <laughs> so, what next, Coach? What's the next? I was asleep. I don't know what, what, where you guys are. We were just finishing up talking about Austin and Becca. And they're like, who, an who was talking about? Because I, I was out, out in the, in the realms of the heaven. Okay, I we was there with my about, Lord. We talked about um, Emily and Brennan. Obviously, that was first. We talked mm -hmm. about Claire and Cameron. We talked about Chloe and Michael. And now we just finished up on Austin and Becca. I guess the and last Lord, is Orion Lauren, and Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Yeah. I was out with the clouds. I was up in the heavens. <laughs> Can't tell that for sure. I was seeing things in the realms of the spirit. Um, <laughs> what's your thoughts about Lauren and Ryan? Because their situation, obviously, it's like I said, it's a dead, a dead horse. Um, but he, you know, Ryan took some accountability on some of the things. Um, you know, he took some accountability. He, well, I say accountability. Let me change that. He was apologetic. You know what I mean? And uh, apologized for some of the things that he did. Um, let's be freaking honest, okay? He, no matter how much he puts it, you know, oh, I wish I would have gave the process more time. What's this, I would have given the process more time. He, he, at the end of the day, you don't like her. So process or no process, you ain't gonna like her anymore. I know the experts say trust the process. I'm gonna be honest with you. If they don't like each other or he don't like her, process ain't gonna change that. 
Okay, it's only going to further exasperate what he doesn't feel. So it, it wasn't that, uh, you know, that's, that he didn't like her. Something, uh, no, sorry, it wasn't just um, he didn't like, that he, he quit the process. He didn't like her, um, you know, he didn't like her. So something about, you know, Devin Taylor was either, you know, if he gave more time to the process, had he been del delegated to the process, bro, process, marriage, uh, yeah. Bro, it don't matter how long how long you would have been, don't matter how many experts you'd have had, you'd have still made the same choice. You weren't feeling her for some type of reason. We're not hundred percent sure why. hundred percent. Something else obviously clicked for him, but he said obviously first day he felt like she had people smile, da 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 da. Mm. Something seems a bit off, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, this is a little bit off. I think I did like the fact that he admitted after Kevin pr pushed a little bit that he was wrong about the sexual comment about her sleeping with somebody two months earlier uh, than him. You know, not that it was a moral situation, but you felt some type of way like this wasn't this wasn't your uh, your girlfriend for nine months that, or a year. And she we realized she slept with somebody when y'all was dating. This is somebody who was going through the same process who before you were before she even met you. You're mad about something that you had no clue about. Like if she said at the table doesn't say anything, you have no idea. And I'm almost almost to the point where she wouldn't have said anything and see how the relationship would have flourished and see where it wanted to go. But also think at that point, well, Ryan was looking for a way out. I think he was looking for a way out right there. He could say, I got it. You slept with somebody two months before the process. Okay. Like no different from your sleeping with somebody a year before the process. I didn't know who she is. You don't know who he is. Let's do this thing together. I'm not telling you to sleep with me tonight because up to that point, he was feeling it. But again, at least he he admitted to say, you know what? I was wrong. I should have, I messed up. I should have thought about what I was saying. Um, but again, they were never going to work, in my opinion. He was too much on his um his own agenda. And he didn't care about her agenda. And he wanted to run what he wanted uh, and say what he wanted to say and how he wanted to say it. And then only wanted to be friends on camera. And he couldn't even do that right because once he said, I want to be friends, he never reached out to her, never connected with her. So happy for them. Uh, she, you know, let her let her go her way, him go his way, and let never will they meet again or have to. So that's all. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I too was tired of uh, Orion and all his, you know, all his many excuses and reasons. And I think although he was the only one to bow out early on, it just shows you can't win <laughs> because <laughs> he backed down early on <laughs> and the ladies still can't stand him. You know, hey, you might not like what he's saying. He does babble about. He don't make a whole lot of sense, but he knows that he didn't want Lauren and he left the process early. Now, the way he went about it, I think we can all agree wasn't the best way. But I think Lauren also showed herself to be somebody that's not easy to deal with. And that's some of the stuff that he pointed out. And hey, some women just don't receive feedback very well. <laughs> and this is an example. Orion is trying to tell her, you're a little difficult. And she was like, no, I'm nice. I'm da -da -da -da, early in the process. But we saw her getting into tussling with Cameron for what? inserting herself into the into the other pink brigades foolishness for what misreading the room and jumping the gun because it was her fault that she opened the door for that whole sex conversation truth be told that's her because ain't nobody ain't nobody he didn't ask her that she asked him and started yep. the conversation and then he asked her so there you go. And then she still kept being weird and awkward talking about she could see him Yourself giving her and some take good. And say, I'm a stronger, better person. Focus on healing your. Kojo, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry, I pressed um, my earphone so it started playing the video. Apologies. Continue. <laughs> yep, yeah, you know, and then she's talking about she has visions of him going down on her. Yeah, ma'am, you 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 went too far, and I think Lauren just to, to, she just talks too much, and she realized it. She still didn't realize it, because I don't know why she was tussling with Cameron. I still don't know why she felt the need to insert herself in that with all this foolishness. She wanted to save her friends. She wanted to be. 
I'm the bad one, right? She wanted everybody to know I'm the bad one. Come, come see me. He got, she kind of shut him down a little bit because he didn't come there anymore. But she wanted, she wanted to be the protector for everybody else. And sometimes being a protector for everybody else can go wrong. In this case, she kind of got it right, but can't protect everybody, especially when your girls are lying and you know they're lying, and you know you, you know they, you know they're lying, and so you, you know that's the biggest thing there. Yeah, I know some people like that she did that, but to me it was like it was pointless, you know. It it, it really was. I, I think she just still she looked like part of the the the, the, the bitter ladies club. So I just wish she would have just let it roll off her shoulders. And for me, every time it showed me that she still had all these unresolved feelings because she kept allowing Orion to keep coming back in and then getting upset during the course of the season. It's like, man, like, what are you doing? Like, let him go. Let him go right off into the sunset. And you two just need to move on. I do agree that he stretched to, he dragged that whole comment. You know, I think could that have been a lesson for her maybe to just be a little more sensitive, but he just dragged it out. He used a reason to dismiss her. And to keep so. his people in the forefront of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I, I can't lie to you. Why did she come at Cameron? I listen, she overstepped her boundaries. And I can see some comments like, Yeah, I love what she said to Cameron. For what though? No, no, for what? There actually has to be a reason as to why you're doing what you're doing. And and I think this goes back to the original start of the whole conversation we started this whole night with even though I fell asleep halfway through. Um, you know, I, I, again, this, this goes back to the <laughs> to the point of toxic femininity in this instance, that when people, when when the women have made up their mind to start a narrative and get into a place of, we're not going to hold each other accountable, but we're going to hold this fort, and that no matter what any of us do, none of us can be held accountable at one point, then stuff like this happens. Right? So listen, I get it. Old girl was crying. Emily was crying. Do I have to stop talking? I was talking at that point in time. You asked me a question and then you start breaking down and crying at that point. Let me finish my point. Right? You asked Cameron to, to, to you asked Cameron a question. He's in the midst of uh, um, 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 answering it and tears are being weaponized as a way of not being able to finish the conversation. We need to stop this. Right? If you're you got your big dog pants on, you're having a conversation, finish the conversation, right? And this is gonna go back to that point about why Brennan is not saying anything. How can I say something if every time you're gonna weaponize tears as a way of making me look bad, right? So now even even Cameron getting shot by Lauren was like, I, I just watched it a little bit behind the scenes. I was like, there actually is no root. Like all he, he had a little bit of a smirk and she got onto him. I'm like, what? Why are you getting on to him? Like, you asked us if he did this thing to you. You should have this energy for Ryan. You having it for Cameron, right? Or oh, uh, and do you know what it is also too? See, I'm gonna say something. Maybe people don't like it. She knew who she can pick on. See, when you know you can beat somebody, right? You do that kind of bull crap, right? Oh, you can't do that thing to me. I I, I know your number, but for, but but he wasn't coming at you. He wasn't talking to you, he was only told, he told that all he said was about the pink dresses, right? So when you know you can, when you know you can dominate somebody, that's when some of this behavior comes out too. So you knew what you was doing, Lauren, because he didn't insult you. He didn't insult the ladies. All he was talking about the fact that the pink, the pink dresses, you had come together and put pink dresses on. And the same thing you're accusing us of is actually what you're doing. And all of a sudden the cape comes on. And in some sense, I felt, I was like, listen, I don't go down that route, but it's where the white folk gonna be like, that's what and see how black folk are aggressive. Cause I was like, where did it, that energy start? It started going south and it didn't need to go south. It almost started becoming like, try me. I want you to and see if I don't finish you off. And it's like, for what? For, for what? For what? Like it did not justify that level of energy. I was just like, 
again, like you're you're kind of overstepping the boundaries. Same way that Emily was doing overstepping the boundaries too, you know, as well with 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 Kevin a little bit. I call him Trevor, but even with Kevin, it just was too much. I was like, oh, whoa, 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 where are we going? You know what I mean? Like, so the reaction that she's doing for me was overdone. Um, and I felt like that, that whatever energy you have is for something else. And you've, you've used it here, um, to get at camera. And I just watched it again. And I was just like the whole entire time. And like, I always keep saying, I said, listen, listen, if he had done the same thing she just did, first thing we'll be saying is he don't like women. He's a misogynist. He has hate in his heart for women. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't like, because the tone that she came with him at was off point. Just saying. Yeah, and I think people don't deep it, but it's the same way for anybody that watches Summer House. The same way now, different dynamics playing out, but that same energy that Jordan had for Phil when they were going back off, back and forth. And I don't know if you saw the first season yet, Kojo, but she was like, we can go there. And she like jumped in his face like that when they were going back and forth last season with that guy, Phil, it's the same thing. It's like, and she, you know, like she went on this whole litany of things where all he was talking about was, Hey, the women are all dressed in pink and they're talking about the men or the, the, the problem, but they're the ones all dressed in pink driving a narrative that, you know, it's all the men's fault. Meanwhile, the men aren't doing the same thing. So I just feel like there was no need for her to direct her energy specifically at him. Like she's like, he singled her out. He just said the ladies are we, and we all saw it. So I'm glad he called it out. I'm glad he put a, a note to that to say, Hey, look, <laughs> y'all all up here in this pink carrying on <laughs> acting like you're innocent and like, we're the big bad guys and that you, you did nothing wrong. And that's, and it's so true. And for her to flip out, like, you could say, well, I disagree. That's not why I'm wearing pink. Fine. But, like, you don't – I'm not scared of you. You don't want it with me. I'm not the one or the two. It's like, Lauren, come on now. This is lifetime. <laughs> you know, take it easy, sis. And she put on her little – you know, listen, I hate to say it. She put on her little mammy cape. For all those white women up there covering them with her mammy cape when it wasn't even her battle to fight her she was f removed from the process on day two mm -hmm. like it just was like what are you fighting their fight for you don't need to fight their fight they got it they got it that's it i agree with you and that's what i said she put a cape on you don't need to fight that for them be quiet at this point kevin was trying to go home that's what made me that's what had me laughing everybody was trying to go home peacefully <laughs> they was trying to close the show and you bring you bring all the energy at the end, at the end of the show to the wrong guy to the guy that had look to the guy who had the heart condition. That's to the weakest guy on the on the set right now. You you bring all the energy to him, not to anybody who's gonna snap back, not to anybody who's gonna say anything to you. You made it look bad. You look like the bully. And that's exactly how I saw it. I just literally watched it and I was like. It's the, it's the, I'm not the one or the two. Now carry on. Well, I wasn't talking to you. Well, carry on. When people do that, they're trying, when people do that, they're trying, they're trying to assert a level of authority over you. And it's like, but he wasn't talking to you specifically. He was talking about as a group, you know what I'm saying to you? So it's just like, yeah, like I said, her and Emily were off point. I don't know what happened. And just not forget, because it was also Lauren who made a comment about these men are basically unattractive and they're stressing us out and did da 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 worth our time and energy. Well, you've carried that energy now onto the stage, right? You've carried that energy onto the stage, right? They are unattractive, did it? Well, uh, well, if they were unattractive and they weren't on it, why were you so pressed about Ryan? <laughs> it's, just, it's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, why were you so pressed about Ryan? He was unattractive and not your level. These men are not our level. This is what happens. Right, and this is what we talk about. I will say that I will say it, ladies. Please don't choose me if you think I'm ugly to you. Please, I beg, because this frustration that you're feeling right now is extra. Uh, it's extra because you feel that you better than me, and now you're looking back and going, "How did this ugly ninja play me?" Like it's like, please, okay, all right. I need you to stay away from me. 
If you know you don't fancy me like a way I fancy you, just leave me alone. Don't grow in it. Don't try to don't try to mature in it. Don't try to uh, uh, stretch in it. I need you to leave it alone. Okay, all right. And you know, just a quick note. Obviously, I, I'm giving Laura smoke, but Emily got to join her too in that space too. Okay, weaponizing these tears all of a sudden. Suddenly you suddenly you want to cry and break down like you wasn't trying to call out Kevin, call out Kevin during the show, like you weren't being uh, uh, aggressive too with with Brennan the way you were responding. Everything was a snap. Everything was a was a was a bite. You know, everything was a was a. Uh, uh, you know, a, a, a bark. I mean, sis, I need you to calm down. Okay, just yeah. Those two for me were doing a little bit too much, and then you know, obviously, when you underpin it with Claire too with her uh, behavior, yeah, the three of them, awesome threesome who were just moving mad to be honest. But um, you know, I just I just need that to chill. It was just too much, you know. And you know what? Even when they were doing that whole thing, they don't deserve us. They're bare minimum. They were like pulling all these TikTok social media quotes and like throwing them around like pasta on the wall. First of all, it's cap. It's cap because all of y'all from everything we saw was so interested in being with those guys. You wanted them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But don't try to, I don't, I, th that bothers me when people do that. It's like, oh, because it didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Now you're going to try to downplay the person. Now all of a sudden, Brennan is a six versus according to Emily, right? So now he's a six. But meanwhile, you've been all over him trying to make this work. So you must have really liked that six. So stop capping. You liked him. Lauren liked Orion. We still don't know why, but she liked him. She wanted to make it work. She kept trying to, you know, she was doing too much. So don't try to downplay it and amp each other up in this toxic foolishness. Just, you know, be honest. Move on. Say, hey, listen, they weren't the guys for us. We don't like that they lied, but we own our part in it. You know, we played a role. And Lauren needs to not fight anybody's battles. Like, you, they don't need you. You don't know these women like that. They don't need you to fight their battles. Let them fight their own battles. You got your own stuff to deal with. You got a problem with Orion and the way that he moved in the process? Then deal with him. Talk to him about it. But you don't need to fight their battles. So insert in yourself. I can't stand when people do that. You're going to insert yourself into something. And you don't even have all the facts. She kept talking like she knew exactly everything that was happening. No, you know mm -hmm. what they told you. You know what Emily told you. You know what Claire told you. You wasn't there to hear everything. So that to me annoyed me. Yeah, it seems so high schoolish. Because they don't like them. I'm not going to like them. And when you break up with me, you're going to talk about them. But you liked me when you was with me. You want to deal with me, with me. You're mad because I'm not sleeping with you. You're mad because I, I wasn't attracted to you. You're mad. Let it go. And at this point, let it ride. Don't change the narrative. And be honest, I think the, the age level of some of the people was real, and they were Im real immature, right? Real immature on the show. I liked you, or I used to like you up until this point. I don't know why people can't say that. I liked you until you said this. I liked you until you did that. I liked you until you whatever. And that's when my attraction, my feeling, my love, my lust, whatever, stopped for you. I liked you until you wouldn't sleep with me if you were better. I, I, I liked you until you start rejecting me all the time. I didn't know how to handle the rejection. Emily, I, uh, Brennan, I let you until you didn't want to sleep. Just all that type of stuff. Be honest and be true to yourself and be true to the person that makes things much easier and better. And just, just to, you know, let me lastly add as well as, you know, <clears throat> just probably a quick skip back, you know, watching obviously the ladies, how they handle the experts. The experts were actually looking confused when they were talking to ladies because they were like, wait, hold on a minute. Well, who silenced you? Who? Were you threatened? I thought about Pascal was like, were you threatened? Were you abused? Like what? I need to know. So I know what I'm going. Maybe, maybe I need to handle these men differently, right? You weren't, none of you were. Okay. All right. And the fact of the matter is we never got to the end of the show where the ladies were saying, you know what? We are accountable for our behavior. And this is not even a man versus woman thing. I, I think this is generally this 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 is simply down to this bunch of people. I want to be honest with you. All right, you know I'm not going to try and make it a man versus woman situation, although it is a man versus woman situation on the show. Um, this is simply down to this bunch, this group, this group here. You know, I feel like you know <clears throat> some of the men are 
unaccountable too. They haven't really said anything too. But you know the fact that Brennan and Cameron offered an apology. You know what I mean? But the ladies, none of them wanted to offer an apology for the fact that they deceived the the uh, the. I think only Bucket. I think Becca did. I think she was the only one that kind of said uh, sorry for her behavior. But everyone else was like, "Now I'm sticking ten toes down." You know, we ain't. We were we were we were manipulated too, so we didn't get to say sorry too. It's like, well, well, now you're no longer there and you're not being silenced. Where's your apology? You are part of the situation. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? True. Instead, Emily was barking. You know what I mean? You had Claire trying to weaponize tears to be like, I don't know why I got into a situation. You know, um, and so yeah, it's just like y'all should have just been honest. And when the experts are telling you, they're confused because they're not sure why you felt like it wasn't a safe space to tell them that actually the men have cahoots together and you're going along with them. Instead, you're like, oh, we, we saw their anxiousness and it made us anxious. Okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> they're anxious, so you're anxious. Okay, what, what, what does that mean? Why didn't you say something? Okay, yeah, y y y'all ain't going to take accountability. Okay, y'all ain't growing still. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's what killed me. That's such a good point. It's like their anxiousness and what. So you went off of what you thought you were told, or not you what you felt, and you made a decision. And now you want to blame the guys on that, you know? And I know that wasn't the whole thing. There was obviously times where Brennan, you know, wanted, uh, and we even saw that. He wanted uh, Emily not to talk about certain things. So that stuff we get and we see, and he owned it, the controlling stuff and not sharing and, you know, concealing things. But them just having this mass uh, idea to withhold things based on what they saw, hey, if it's to your detriment, you got to own that, right? If you see somebody walking off a bridge, that age old expression, and you decide to walk off and follow them because it's your friend, who's who's accountable for that? You have to take accountability at some point for making decisions that were wrong. Yeah, I think that's true, Sean. Like, no one wanted to be accountable for that was wrong. Um, and I think everybody kept them trying to get them to see that. The experts tried to get them to see that. And the women never pointed out I was wrong. I should have never follow through. I should have never went with this. I should have never went uh, down this road. I should have been, what well, except for Ben, the only one say, you know what? I should have been true to myself. Everybody else, nothing, nada. They did the blame game, point the finger type thing. And no one wins that way. And I think that was Brain was trying to say, look, all right, we've grown, we made mistakes. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. But somebody wanted to be declared a winner and somebody wanted somebody to be declared a loser and nobody was willing to move on. Everything's not win loss. Yep, I agree a hundred percent. And I think you know, listen. I think we just learned something over. You know, you sometimes you gotta be, you gotta respect people's opinions and respect people's feedback. Um, and even Kevin tried to like twist Orion's words back around and why he didn't like the fact that she had sex two months before that's the way he feels <laughs> and he has every right to feel that way whether he if that's what he wanted and if that's 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 his perception of relationships and that he felt like he would have he wanted to be with somebody that was aligned with him and his view of sex sexuality and you know the the timing he has every right to feel that way. And the same for Brennan. Like, and, and, and for any woman that doesn't like a guy for whatever reason, you have a right to feel that way. That's the worst thing you could try to do is somebody tells you something that they don't like, you ask them to be honest. And then when they're honest, you try to retwist their words or change their mind. That's the worst thing you can do. Like, don't do that because you're now denying yourself to try to be with somebody else. That's not, and, and it's never going to work. And we see it, we saw it play out in real time. Like, you have to be open to hear what somebody says. Oh, that's slut shaming. That's this, that's how he feels. <laughs> some people have conservative views about sex and some people don't. You need to align yourself with people that feel the same way, but don't try to tell somebody they're wrong for feelings another way or tell them they should think about it differently. They don't. 
and you want to force a square through a circle, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get that. Yep. Any last thoughts, guys? Any other thoughts? No. Just hope Chicago's Chicago is better. Let's hope so. I'm gonna be invested in that one. Pew pew. Um, <laughs> Sean, uh, you must give us a, a benediction then, because I think we've we've done all the couples. <laughs> and you are you are ready to retire. <laughs> I've been retired. Excellent. Well, listen, folks, thank you for hanging in, hanging in there. You know, I know we left some reviews out in the middle, but you guys came in the end and that's where it counts, right? It's not always how you start, but how you finished. And the season finished with the bang and we're here to support you and finish with the bang. I think we got a couple of more episodes. We'll see. You know, we'll see if, if good old Kojo is willing to really dive in and see if there's anything interesting to still talk about. But I think we learned some good lessons here. You know, we learned, you know, lies don't don't bode well. They don't age well. It's like a broken refrigerator. The food will spoil. So lies spoil. So be honest in your relationships. Be honest in your intentions. Be upfront. Um, and last but not least, please, please don't waste your energy trying to take somebody down because you know what they say. When you dig somebody else's grave, you're digging your own. You're digging your own. So please don't dig graves for other people. You know, because you'll wind up right in that same grave. So, you know, be honest, be transparent, and be upfront. Back to you, coach. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Uh, listen, chat, thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Uh, it's been a, a, a good conversation. Uh, can't wait for next week because you know what? Uh, you know, the, <laughs> that female empowerment went right out the window, didn't it? Because uh, <laughs> it looks like Lauren was talking to Michael and Chloe weren't happy about it. So all that female empowerment, I wonder why Chloe ain't wearing the pink. Okay, she wasn't honest too. That's something that she had to happen. That's the reason why she weren't wearing pink on our reunion. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen as well uh, next week because it feels like, uh, uh, you know, there's going to be more to be unhatched um and that female empowerment looks like it's going to tell a little bit toxic when they choose sides on this as well so we'll see what happens there uh going forward as well uh make sure you guys like share subscribe click on the bell button for notification and uploads we appreciate you guys i know this week is also the start of the new show on own never ever met as well so uh we'll try and get something out for you this week i'm thinking gonna be in london so it might be that by monday we have a, a live panel on that um as well so uh make sure you guys like share subscribe click on the bell button for notification uploads i am out okay as you can see i'm tapped i'm ready to go to bed okay into the realms of the spirit appreciate y'all stay lots loaded bye, -bye.